Welcome back to another video everyone. I kind of apologize uh, for the length of time between the last video and this one. Uh, today we're just going to be doing a very quick rehousing of some really interesting new critters I've got. And we'll go over a few uh, small updates and plans uh, for upcoming videos. So stay tuned till the end. Now you may be noticing that this very alien looking setup with little sort of suspended clay bridges and all that is quite different from the uh, general setups that I've showed so far in this brief uh, channel's history. And that's because we're not actually housing a spider or spiders in this particular setup. Instead, we're going to have one of the collection's very few non-spiders and even more fewer non-arachnids. So we've already actually got three of such animals in this enclosure. I'll put some uh, videos at the end of this one of when I first put them in. I put some younger ones in here to let them acclimate first before I put the bigger ones in. So the features of this enclosure, which are pretty obvious, where the main feature is these little sort of, uh, yeah, floating, well not really floating, but just sort of suspended little pathways or bridges I made out of just clay. So all I did was just get some wild natural clay. And I sort of mixed it with a little bit of a red desert sand, which you can see I've sprinkled on top as well. And a peat moss to give it a bit more structural integrity. And the little black rocks you see on top there are just uh, activated uh, charcoal chips, which are just decoration. They can also be used as a filter medium in some, I think, fish tanks. Uh, you get it from some aquarium stores or online. So, and then there's also just an assortment of local uh, mosses and uh, liverworts going around. So it's a fairly new setup. Um, it's only been uh, made a couple of weeks ago. So before long, this will all become fully green and uh, be a very interesting habitat once it's all finished up for our inhabitants. So let's have a look at what we'll be living in this setup today. Now a very alien looking setup could only be appropriate for some very alien looking creatures and those creatures that we'll be featuring today are some that are, a lot of people have asked me about if I've kept previously but this is the first time I've really tried to keep them properly and they are velvet worms. And this one's hiding a little bit in here. We've actually got three uh, in here. There we go. You can see the other two just down there. Now, I do um, not remember the name of the species at the very moment. Those are only a fairly recent acquisition, and the name is a little bit hard for me to remember at the moment, but I will put it in the video uh, for any viewers that are interested. Now, they're not massive, these ones. They're probably one of the larger velvet worms I have seen in my life, so they're just under the length of my thumb when they're fully stretched out so sort of between 45 50 millimeters maybe a little bit longer so there's actually as i also mentioned there are three little ones that are already in here and the reason i put them in sort of two different stages was i they do live communally now these ones but i thought it would be just better for the young ones the smaller ones to sort of find their uh, place in the enclosure first and settle in so that the big ones don't take all the prime spots for them. So I will unbury these uh, from the moss a little bit and I'll get the macro lens or close-up lens on the GoPro and I'll try and record just some uh, nice close-up videos so we can see these incredible animals uh, in a bit better detail. I'm still experimenting with the GoPro's capabilities uh, with the macro lens. As we know, it's not really a uh, macro camera to start with, but I have been trying to sort of fiddle around with the best settings, so I thought I'd get some even closer shots on the camera on my phone, although it won't be probably as clear as what I'd like. But here we can really see why they are called velvet worms. Now, if you look very, very carefully, if I zoom up really close, even though it's a little bit blurry, you can see the edge of their body is covered in little grooves. 
And this is actually like a hydrophobic layer on the exoskeleton because the way that these very unique and incredible little animals hunt is actually uh, by squirting glue from little glands on the sides of their heads. Now I will try and film this at a later video, it's probably not going to work out today because they don't really hunt when they're a bit stressed. I also don't want to put the lights on them for too long because they are very photosensitive and I'm not even sure if these guys actually have eyes, but I imagine if they do that uh, shining the light on them for extended periods would damage their eyes. I think the biggest one is underneath this one here. Oh, it's hiding around somewhere. Oh, there he is. This one here, I believe, is the longest. There he goes, crawling in. All right, without further ado, let's introduce them to their new home. Now, I just got glued by one of them, and I can actually say that the glue is way stronger than I expected for such a tiny little animal. It uh, dries pretty fast, and um, I'll probably use up a lot of the stickiness now, but the little tiny shot from this one just here, from uh, giving it a little bit of a pat, is enough to actually make me need to use quite a bit of force to actually separate my fingers if they're properly stuck. So, incredible... Uh, defense and a hunting method from such an amazingly unique and little tiny creature. We can just about wrap up this video. We've successfully rehoused the velvet worms. Uh, they're all hidden, except for one little one which is hiding underneath this piece of driftwood there. But I'll not shine the light on that one very long because I don't want to disturb it. I'll turn my other little stand light off. So, uh, as for upcoming videos, a few things I have planned. Um, probably the 
most immediate things that I really want to try and do. There's a lot of uh, large bioactive enclosures, so ones that are planted with moss and uh, ferns, not like this one, but on a much larger scale, such as like communal uh, fish tank setups. I have at least three uh, different ones of those. Um, I would be interested in starting. I also have to rehouse every single one of my funnel webs, including uh, my border rangers one. So a couple of them are getting this really nasty mold in there, which I've had in the past, and the only way to really uh, get rid of this mold is to just completely remove it from all the enclosures by just rehousing. I've got that, and I also need to upgrade all of my animids. So in here we have Prussia marker. Oh, I presume Prussian marker, I should say. I ignore the lid label. Our species, uh, Flinders Rangers. So these are very, very beautiful spiders that have attractive golden coloration all over them. So I need to rehouse all of those too. So for those sort of projects, if there's any of you guys that are interested in any particular one of those, let me know in the comments of the video which one you'd like to see done first. Probably another well, last one I'm thinking of, maybe for a 1,000 subscriber special. I have the largest trapdoor in my entire collection, and about 10 centimeters in leg span to rehouse. I'm thinking we can do that for maybe a 1,000 sub special, but if you want to see that sooner, let me know in the comments. So I hope you enjoyed this video, everyone. Uh, leave a comment, like, and subscribe. It would really help out the channel, and uh, share the video, of course, if you think there's anyone you know that might be interested. And I can't wait to get the channel properly fixed up with uh, music and banner and uh, intro theme and all that kind of stuff. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.